One day, the vain, evil-hearted Queen Hela called her chamberlain, Dunkov. Unveil my magic mirror, Dunkov. Chamberlain Dunkov was clumsy and pulled the cover down onto himself. You fool! Get out right now! The queen admired herself in the mirror and then said, Mirror, mirror on the wall, who is the fairest of them all? The magic mirror answered her, In this land, my queen, you are no longer fairest in the land. Snow White is the most beautiful. Hela became very angry. It can't be. No one can be more beautiful than me. The whole castle seemed to shake with her anger, and her evil heart wanted to destroy the beauty of Snow White. She made a plan and ordered the royal huntsman to take Snow White into the enchanted woods and kill her. And bring me back her heart. Snow White trusted the royal huntsman and went with him into the woods. Along the way, she saw a wounded bird on the ground. And Snow White picked up the bird to help heal its wing. Behind her, the royal huntsman sneaked up on her and took out his bow to shoot Snow White. He drew back the bow and took aim, but he could see that the girl had a kind heart as she held the wounded bird, and he decided it was wrong to kill Snow White. Snow White, she ordered me to take your life. I can't kill a person as good and kind as you. Who wants to take my life? It's Queen Hela. You must run away and hide. The huntsman chose to trick the queen and killed a wild boar instead so he could take the boar's heart to the queen and make Hela think that the princess was dead. The princess was terrified and ran through the dark woods. She struggled through sharp branches and bats in the night until she could run no further. She collapsed against a tree and fell asleep in the cold, dark, enchanted forest. When the huntsman reached the castle, he marched directly to the queen. I have fulfilled your command. Queen Hela took the box and examined the heart. She believed that Snow White was dead and her evil laughter echoed through the castle. When the sun finally rose, Snow White woke up in the heart of the forest, and there before her was the cutest little house with a small garden gate and picket fence, tiny windows with a doorbell, and a round green door. She rang the bell, but no one answered, and when she reached for the door to knock, It opened. Inside, everything was so small that it felt like she was in a toy house. Tiny pots, tiny spoons, glasses. When she found a tiny bowl of soup, she was so hungry that she ate it. And then fell asleep on a tiny bed. Not far away, the owners of the house finished their work in the mines and went home. As soon as they entered, they knew something was wrong. So they walked quietly and whispered. Shh. Uh, Someone has eaten my bread. Mm. Someone has used my plate. Someone is sleeping in my bed right now. Mm. Soon. 
such a beautiful girl. Whoa! Hey! Whoa! Hey! Look out! Oh! Get the lamp! Ah. Oh. Catch! Oh! Hey! Whoa! Oh. Ah. Get oh. the lamp! Whoa! Catch! Yikes! Phew! Oh! Oh! What? Shh! She's awakened. She's hiding under the blanket. Hmm. Don't be afraid of us, little girl. We are the seven dwarves. I am Ace, and these are jolly, angry, curious, silly, shy, and lazy. Well, I... I am Snow White. I'm sorry I wandered into your house. Snow White told them everything that had happened to her, and the dwarves were very sad to hear her tale. So they said she could stay with them in their little house. Far away, in another land, there was a young, handsome prince. His name was Antoine. He loved sitting outside at night and looking at the stars, which reminded him of the people he loved. One night, he saw the face of Snow White in the starry sky and felt he should seek her out. A fairy told him she was in danger and gave him a magical heart necklace. So Prince Antoine got his trusty horse and rode away to find the beautiful face in the sky. Back in the castle, the evil-hearted Hela was again in front of her magic mirror. Dunkov, uncover the magic mirror. Let me see my beauty. Dunkov entered, but the cover got caught on the mirror and he almost knocked it over. Dunkov is such a clumsy assistant. Always at the most critical times, he becomes awkward and clumsy. The queen was continually annoyed with him. When Dunkov had left, Queen Hela again asked the mirror to tell her how beautiful she was. Mirror, mirror on the wall, who is the fairest of them all? Sorry, my queen, but Snow White, who lives with the seven dwarves, is the fairest in the land. Ah, no, no! I thought Snow White was dead! The queen stayed up all night, making evil plans to kill Snow White once and for all. She decided the best way to disguise herself, so she changed into a cute little bunny. In the morning, the dwarves went off to work. One by one, they kissed Snow White on the cheek and walked to the mine. And they warned her to be careful while in the house alone. Now, princess, don't open the door to strangers. It isn't safe. The forest seemed peaceful, and Snow White began to water the flowers in the garden. The princess noticed a little bunny sitting in the garden, who seemed hurt. She went over and picked it up and brought it inside the house. She bandaged the rabbit's hurt leg and let it rest in the sun on the dwarf's bed. The bunny seemed like it was sleeping, but as soon as the princess left the room, the rabbit opened its eyes and looked around. Then it jumped, 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 and turned back into the evil Queen Hela. This was exactly what she had planned. She poured purple poison into the pillow, thinking that the princess would sleep there and die from the poison. Snow White was so tired from working in the garden that she went inside to rest. She was just about to put her head down on the poisoned pillow. Snow White! <laughs> Snow White! When she heard the dwarves come home, the princess met them at the door, and after a delicious dinner, they danced all night long. Snow White fell asleep in front of the fireplace, and it's a good thing that she did, because then she wouldn't be sleeping on the poisonous pillow. When the queen returned to her castle, Dunkov was still asleep, guarding her door. Thinking her plan had succeeded, she went to the magic mirror 
Mirror, mirror on the wall, who is the fairest of them all? My queen, Snow White, who lives with the seven dwarves, is more beautiful than you. Gah! No! No! No, no, no! I should be the most beautiful in all the land! Me! I will make a plan that will kill Snow White! A few days later, while the dwarves worked in the mine, Snow White was sewing some of the dwarves' worn clothing. And then, she heard a knock on the door. The door was knocked three times. Snow White looked through the door to see who it was. And it was an old, ugly woman with a basket of apples. Who are you? I'm a saleswoman. I have very delicious apples. Would you like to try one? Snow White was afraid to open the door at first, but she loved red apples. Here you go. Enjoy it, my beautiful child. A free sample. Snow White took the apple given by the old woman and took a bite. The apple had been poisoned. She fell to the ground before she could even cry out for help. <laughs> Just down the road, Prince Antoine rested his horse in the shade of a tree. He had traveled far to find the beautiful face he had seen in the sky. Just off the road, he saw an old woman walking along. He was about to go speak with her, when suddenly, she transformed into the evil Queen Hela. The prince and his horse were stunned, and he decided to not go ask her for directions. Later that night, when the dwarves came home, they saw Snow White still and lifeless on the floor. They were so sad, and their hearts were broken into a thousand pieces. They crafted a beautiful glass coffin and carried her to the country's longest river so that all the people of the kingdom would know of her beauty. Just downstream, the prince was traveling on his horse on the riverbank, and he noticed the glass coffin in the boat. He recognized the face of the girl immediately. The prince was very sad, but he opened the cover of the coffin. He took the stardust necklace from his pocket and put it on the princess. Goodbye, my princess. Shine like a star wherever you are. But just then, the prince saw Snow White move. The stardust necklace was magical and rewarded him for his diligent search of the face he saw in the sky. Snow White revived. When she awoke, she was amazed to have such a handsome prince standing beside her, rescuing her. When they eventually got to shore and returned to Snow White's castle, she and Prince Antoine told the king everything. When the king learned what Queen Hela did to Snow White, he banished her from the kingdom. The king locked the magic mirror and all of the queen's possessions into the dungeon of the castle. Many months later, Snow White and the prince fell in love because this was not an arranged marriage and had a beautiful wedding in the castle. They invited the dwarves and celebrated and lived happily ever after. <laughs> Once upon a time, there was a land of beautiful blue skies and lush green grass. There, in a magnificent castle, Snow White and the Prince Antoine lived happily. 
But not far away, evil-hearted Queen Hela lived in a dark cave behind the mountains. She and her servant Dunkov had been banished when they tried to kill Snow White. And now, Hela had a new evil plan. Dunkov, this time, no one can stop me. I will have revenge on Snow White. Yes, you will, Your Majesty. Chamberlain, Chamberlain, tell me, who is the fairest of them all? Um, you, uh, my queen, are the fairest in all the land, except for, um, well... Dum Dunkov, no! I must be the most beautiful in all the land. I shall make a magic mirror so I can find the magic dark forest. Hela's original magic mirror was locked up in the dungeon of the castle, so Hela began her plan to create a new magic mirror. To do this, she had to gather all the magical parts. First, she collected some Jim Jim leaf. Then, the magical pink buds and the floating swamp stones. Her magic spell book said to boil them for 20 minutes at 400 degrees. Finally, out of the black brew came her new, more powerful magic mirror. Black mirror, black mirror, awaken! Show me the forest of Snow White's funny little dwarven friends. Dunkov was surprised by what he saw. The new evil mirror floated in front of him, surrounded by floating black stones and a purple, spiky frame. Inside the mirror appeared the dwarf's forest, but it became dark and scary. Hela reached into the mirror. <laughs> black mirror, black mirror, no longer on the wall. Change the dwarves' forest and capture them all. Meanwhile, the seven dwarves, who worked all day, came out of the mine one by one. First Ace, then Shy, Angry, Silly, Curious, Jolly, and Lazy. Phew. What a long day's work. Yeah, let's get some rest. Maybe I could nap right here. <sighs> no way. Get up. We can't rest. We should go home before evening falls. The dwarves got on their way in a single line. <laughs> The silly dwarf was walking at the back of the line. He saw a crow flying among the branches of the trees. There was a bright little stone in Crow's mouth. The silly dwarf was distracted and started to climb the tree to get the brilliant stone in the mouth of the crow. Up, 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 just as he was about to catch the crow, the tree began to sway. The crow has flown away and gone. The branches wrapped around Silly Dwarf so tightly he could not escape, and he lost his green hat on a branch. The other dwarves didn't notice that Silly Dwarf was gone and kept walking. Now Curious Dwarf was in the back, and then he smelled a delicious pie. He closed his eyes and started to walk to the direction the scent came from. The bewitching forest led him right into a tree branch and he hit his head. And then the magical scent of the forest covered him up and took him away. All that was left was his yellow hat.
the rest of the dwarves finally arrived in their little cottage in the woods. Meanwhile, in the castle, Snow White gathered the kingdom's most delicious foods to bring to her favorite friends, the seven dwarves. Sweetheart, I'm going to the woods to visit my friends, the seven dwarves. Be careful on the road. That evil Hela could be anywhere. I love you, sweetheart. Snow White began her long journey through the forest, and a beautiful bird came and rested on her shoulder. It was trying to warn her of something. The bird flew away from the road, trying to get Snow White to follow. I see. You want me to follow you. I'm coming, little bird. As Snow White followed the bird, she found the green hat swinging from a branch. But this, this is Silly Dwarf's hat. Something bad must have happened to him. The princess kept on following the colorful bird, and then she found the yellow hat on the thorny herbs. That's, that's the curious dwarf's hat. The princess and the colorful bird quickly went to the cottage of the seven dwarves. The dwarves were hopeful when they saw Snow White. Ah, Snow White, we're so glad you've come. We cannot find curious and silly. Will you help us? We need to find them. They may have been trapped by the evil Hela. We must find them. Hmm. <sighs> Shy and I will stay here at the house in case they return. Snow White, Ace, Jolly, and Angry went out to search. Far away, at the Queen's evil cave in the mountains, Hela and her servant Dunkov had imprisoned Curious Dwarf and Silly Dwarf in a cage. <laughs> You'll be punished for helping Snow White. I will destroy all you in the dark forest. Hella walked back into her cave to her evil mirror. Black Mirror, Black Mirror, find Snow White and her friends. Change what was bright and warm into a stormy end. Snow White and the dwarves were following the colorful bird along the trail, but then the weather changed into a dark storm. They kept going through the darkness so they could find their friends. They walked all night into the mountains. The colorful bird kept leading them to the mountain to rescue the dwarves. From the edge of the cliff, the evil-hearted Hela saw Snow White and other dwarves coming. She knew they would be tired from the storm. I knew they would come. <laughs> Dunkov, is everything ready? Uh, yes, it, it, Queen, it is ready. Snow White and the dwarves were exhausted, but kept climbing the mountain. As they reached the top, they saw the entrance to the cave, and the cage hanging over the cliff with Curious and Silly. We are going to save you! Snow White! Snow White! Look out! The Black Mirror! Look out! She has a new mirror in the cave! Snow White carefully entered the cave. Outside, Dunkov kept watch over Cage. Just out of sight, the dwarves whispered and made a clever plan to rescue their friends. Angry sneaked up behind Dunkov, leapt onto his back, and put a sack over his head. Then Jolly released the cage, but it came down so fast that it hit Dunkov in the head and knocked him out. And it's a good thing too, because the door of the cage was still locked. The key is on Dunkov's neck. Right there. Take a look. Grab it. 
Open this cage. Jolly took the key that was on Dunkov's neck and quickly unlocked the cage. Silly and Curious were saved. But inside the cave, Snow White was face to face with the evil-hearted Queen Hella. Hella, you can't be beautiful by doing evil. If you really want to be a beautiful woman, you must change your heart and stop hurting people. Beauty comes from the heart. But the evil-hearted Hella didn't care. She used a magic spell to turn her eyes red and change her fingers into sharp knives. But behind Hella, the dwarves sneaked in to help Snow White. Hella approached Snow White, making her back up towards the black mirror. Just enter the dark mirror, Snow White. Then you will disappear into the dark forest forever. <laughs> Silly dwarf sneaked in front of the tall queen. And the other dwarves pushed her from behind. She tumbled past Snow White into the black mirror. Hella's scream woke Dunkov up. He ran inside the cave and saw Snow White next to the mirror. I am coming, my queen, fairest in all the land. They were trapped. The dwarves ran with joy and hugged Snow White. <laughs> Thank you for saving us, Snow White. Now we need to get rid of this. The dwarves and the princess threw the mirror down from the cliff. Now let's go home. Finally, Silly and Curious were very happy to be at home again. Together with Snow White, they had a nice dinner and had fun. Once upon a time, in a land far, far away, there was the brightest, whitest, largest castle in all the land, where Snow White and Prince Antoine lived. They loved each other very much. In the mornings, they would walk together in the garden. In the afternoons, they would ride their horses. In the evening, they would dance together in their castle hall. Snow White, you are so beautiful. You light up my heart every night. As long as you're with me, my prince, I will shine like stars. They finally got to enjoy peace in their kingdom, ever since the evil-hearted Queen Hela had been banned, and then trapped in the dark forest. But there in the dark forest, evil queen made her own castle out of poisonous mud. Her clumsy servant, Dunkov, served her faithfully. And now, Hela had a magic globe to spy on Snow White. Crystal ball on the table. Show Snow White if you are able. Grr. Grr. I hate Snow White. She's so pretty. I will destroy your precious prince, and then your beauty will turn to sorrow. No one can be more beautiful than me. You are more beautiful than anyone, my queen. You're even more beautiful than me. <laughs> Get out, Dunkov. I don't want to see your ugly face. <laughs> the evil queen watched through her crystal ball as the prince left the castle. Hella closed her eyes and imagined her evil plan, and then called out to the magic mirror, which was still at the bottom of the sea. Black mirror, black mirror, dark and round and flat. Move in front of the prince like an invisible trap. The magic black mirror disappeared from the ocean and then moved in front of a tree on the prince's path. It changed to be invisible so it could trap the prince. Back at the palace, Snow White's closest friends, the seven dwarves, were going off to work in the mines. Every morning, 
Snow White would see them off and give them kisses. Goodbye, my seven dwarves. The prince had hired the dwarves to dig deep into their mine and collect precious gems for the castle. That. Oh, how bright it is. <laughs> Silly, look what you've done. You've messed them all up. Wait, wait, here. There's more here. Hey, you're right. Look here in the rock. The dwarves didn't know it, but they had found a very valuable magical dust. It sparkled brightly, so they filled their tiny pouches with it and then started back on the path to the castle. Uh, just a little bit here for you, and a little bit here for me. Here we go, here we go, back to the castle. On the other side of the kingdom, Prince Antoine was traveling the road with his white horse, Prego. He was picking some lovely red roses for his wife, Snow White. And then he saw a beautiful red rose at the base of a tree and decided to ride his horse over to it. Hmm. Hmm? Giddy up, Prego! Hurrah! Hey! Yeah. Whoa, 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 boy. But the prince did not see the magic black mirror in front of him. As he reached for the flower, his hand disappeared. But he kept going, moving further and further into the invisible mirror until he was completely gone. His horse Prego was shocked and afraid, and he ran back to the castle as fast as he could. Inside the dark mirror was the dark forest where the prince laid on the ground. This was all part of Hela's plan. Handsome Prince Antoine, asleep on the grass, I command your heart to do this one task. Gather all your memories of Snow White and forget everything about her, and serve me with all your will and might. Then, Prince Antoine woke up, but his eyes had changed to red. His mind had forgotten Snow White, and he was under a spell to serve the evil queen. I must obey my queen. <laughs> Meanwhile, the prince's horse, Prego, ran as fast as he could to the castle. When Snow White saw the horse without Prince Antoine, she was worried that something bad had happened. Prego, did something happen to Antoine? Oh no! Snow White had an idea. She ran to the furthest, darkest room of the castle, where Queen Hela's original magic mirror had been locked away. The mirror always told the truth, so she thought she could use it to find out where Antoine was. The seven dwarves arrived at the castle, unaware of what had happened to Prince Antoine. But when they saw Snow White running and worried, they ran after her and followed her to the dungeon where the original magic mirror was locked away. Snow White stood in front of the magic mirror. golden stand? The magic mirror didn't answer. Snow White asked again. Mirror, mirror on the wall, answer my call. Finally, the mirror answered. You seek Prince Antoine. Hela has trapped him in the dark forest. Hela. I knew it. I knew she was behind this. Then, the image of the magic mirror disappeared, and instead, Queen Hela suddenly appeared in the mirror. When the seven dwarves saw Hela, they closed each other's eyes with fear. <laughs> if you want to save your precious prince, reach into the mirror to find him. Snow White loved Antoine and took a step towards the mirror. Her hand went into the mirror, and she was pulled through it into the land of the dark forest. Don't go, Snow White! Wait! It was too late. 
Snow White arrived in the dark forest. Thunder lit up the sky. Trees burned in the dark. And scary creatures crept along in the distance. The seven dwarves didn't know what to do. But they were loyal to Snow White and decided to follow her. As Snow White and the seven dwarves made their way through the dark forest, a few fireflies came to them and lit the way. And it was a good thing too, because they almost walked right into a lake. The princess and the dwarves carefully hopped across the lake on some stones. But suddenly, a giant octopus with eight long tentacles reached up out of the water and attacked them. The evil creatures snatched up the dwarves one by one and started swinging the dwarves back and forth. Snow White! Snow White! Help! Ah. And just as the octopus was going to grab Snow White, more fireflies flew around her to protect her. Thank you, fireflies. Thank you. Please rescue my friends too. Shine brighter. The fireflies' light got stronger and brighter as they flew around Snow White. The fireflies flew over to the monster's big eyes. Shine brighter. And the monster was so annoyed with the light that it let go of the dwarves and they escaped. The octopus monster bubbled down into the water again. Oy, well, thank you, Snow White. You saved our lives. Wow, we should be more careful. Look, that must be Hella's castle. Oh, what a castle. Inside the castle, Queen Hella began her evil plan. All she needed was a rope from Dunkov. Clumsy Dunkov tripped and tangled himself up in the rope. With one touch, Hella cast a spell on the rope, and it released Dunkov. Then, the queen ordered Prince Antoine to catch Snow White with the magical rope. Snow White and the seven dwarves finally arrived in the castle courtyard. Antoine was there, standing still with his hands and legs tied together. Snow White rushed to untie the prince, but it was a trap. As soon as she touched him, the magical rope switched over to Snow White's hands. <laughs> I caught her, my queen. The seven dwarves tried to untie the princess, but then the evil Queen Hella showed up right behind the prince. I finally captured you, pretty Snow White. Oh, you are terrible, Hella. You've bewitched him with a spell. Hella began to walk towards Snow White to destroy her with the magical fire. Magic flames were all around her. The dwarves were shocked, but Silly Dwarf ran towards the queen to stop her. But then he tripped and the dwarf's tiny pouch flew through the air and the magic dust from the mine fell onto the hands of the princess and the ropes came undone. I'm free. Hey, look! The dust we found in the mine breaks the spells. <gasps> what? Huh? Huh. Hmm. When Snow White saw what happened, she remembered that her necklace was made of stardust. So she opened the lid of the necklace and blew the stardust towards Prince Antoine. And then Prince was freed from the spell, and he was himself again. Rope! Dunkov, get me the magical rope! But Prince Antoine was faster and snatched up the rope and then threw it around Dunkov. The magic rope tied up Dunkov tightly. Then all the other dwarves blew the magic mine dust from their pouches towards the evil Queen Hella, and the dust extinguished the magic flames around her. Hella turned into a stone statue. Then all the magical dust was caught up in the wind and blew all through the dark forest and changed it to a beautiful place again. And the forest grew, full of leaves and grass and flowers. Hella was turned to stone, and her wickedness had finally been stopped. Hey. 
And love and friendship had taken its place. Snow White, the prince, and the seven dwarves returned to their castle, and everything was as beautiful and peaceful as before. I have found happiness in this forest. My little friends protect me here. Their tiny hearts are. 